I'll start the meeting. Uh, this is an official meeting of the Springfield Women's Commission, chaired by myself, Councillor Walsh, held on Zoom. And uh, we are joined by Commissioner Ann Graith, Commissioner Ellen Morehouse, Commissioner Ayanna Crawford, Commissioner and City Councilor Zaida Govan, also chair of the Mental Health Committee, Commissioner Mariah Mock, Commissioner Denise Stewart, Commissioner Lamari Jackson, and Commissioner Zumali. Zumali, you're you're still muted. Yeah, it's either Zumali or Wonder Woman. I can't tell. So, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, there you are. I like I like your graphic. So, so before we get on to our official business, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Vernice Smith Brown, who I think you can see on our meeting. Last night at the um, public speak portion of the Springfield City Council, Vernice spoke. And what she is advocating, and it's right up our alley, fits right into our objectives, is a call to action on domestic violence. And when, uh, and when she spoke, I could just hear the bells going off saying, this is someone that should work with us I like the idea of a call to action. I think that could be one of, obviously, you know, I shared with her that when we did our survey, domestic violence was a major concern of everybody who responded to the survey. Uh, we could work together to be effective. So I want to introduce you, Bernice, to the members of my committee. And if you could share a little bit of what you shared last night at the city council speak out. Good evening. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having me. I want to also say congratulations to you. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I'd like the school officials and school nurses to get involved by implementing educational conferences twice a year on domestic violence. We need to empower the youth with knowledge of the topic so they will know domestic violence is a serious matter and they can stop the cycle. And thank you for your time. Okay. Yeah, I think you can share your story and what you're hoping to do. If it's not too hard no, for it's not too much at all. Among people who have had experience one way or the other uh, with domestic violence, personally and professionally. Okay. So I would say you're among friends. Thank you. A little bit about my story. Um, I was, I'll share, I'll go into how the environment can affect a child. A child in this environment can normalize abuse, creating a cycle. When I was 15, I entered a relationship in which I experienced domestic violence. Well, without counseling, this affected my relationships with many others. My family was unaware of the abuse I suffered, but classmates knew. By the age of 10, I watched my mother abused by my father. I was molested and knew others who were molested. I saw a female being raped by multiple men. A close confidant of mine also normalized a woman being beaten. It was the act of her father. A female being hurt by the opposite sex became normal. I grew up thinking less of women and less of myself the older I became. Ultimately, I'd look for a domineering figure type of boyfriend or develop a defensive manner. Um, it's a topic that's been dear to my heart and I'm just grateful that you yeah, that you're very brave for you to share that what you what you've gone through but what what really struck a chord with me is that you are looking for a call to action and i think i joined my uh, fellow commissioners to say we want to have a uh, an effect on domestic violence in springfield uh so uh i'd like to open it up to the commissioners to see if you'd like to if you'd like to make any comments or share anything with with Bernice. I would like to just tell you, Bernice, this is an excellent, excellent uh, project that you bring to us. We have been looking for a way to jump in and a call to action is a perfect, um, a perfect way of doing it. And so we'll definitely, I'm definitely interested in seeing how we can build as a, as a group 
to really come out with a strong call to action because together our voices make a lot of noise. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if anybody else has any. If any I may, uh, Councilor Walsh, um, um, thank you so much, Bernice, for sharing your story. I was not able to be there last night um, at the council meeting um, to hear your speak out. Um, but I know that um, that takes a lot of courage to do that. And I appreciate you doing it because um, I know that a lot of not even just women, but men also experience domestic violence, not as a high rate as women do, but men do. So I think when we share our stories, um, it gives others the opportunity to get a little bit of courage to share theirs. And I'm hoping that that's what will happen after you've shared your story and after we continue to allowing others to share their stories. So I totally agree with the call to action. Um, I'd like to hear more about how you think that would happen and how we can support it. So thank you very much again. Thank you, Counselor. Thank you, Counselor, who, who's doing a wonderful job with really related fields of uh, mental health and awareness. Uh, Aya, I see your hand raised. Um, yes, thank you so much um, for acknowledging you have, me. You have a new hairdo. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. washed it. I just washed it. <laughs> I just washed my hair. That's all. Okay. So you'll see the, the real me tomorrow, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm not sure where this recording is going to, but whatever. <laughs> um, so anyway, thank you so much, um, uh, Counselor Walsh, um, for uh, bringing our guest speaker on today. And thank you, Bernice, uh, for sharing your story and being bold and courageous to share, because I think that's so, certainly the most uh, important thing that we share, you know, what has happened to us and how do we move forward and how do we support and empower each woman, whether it's domestic violence, whether it's uh, wage uh, discrimination, whatever it might be. And so I think, you so much. and so I think, you know, certainly doing something around domestic violence. Um, I know the month is generally in October, is it? Is that when it should be? Is? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so perhaps, you know, uh, creating a, an event and collaborating with you on doing something publicly um, in our city around that, I would certainly uh, think that would be a great uh, way to uh, collaborate and partner with you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Zoom lead, was your hand up? I thought it was. It was. It was. Uh, uh, okay. My colleagues um, did um, ask the questions, and so I want to thank you for being vulnerable. Um, um, it's not easy uh, for women of color to like come out and really tell their truth. So I, um, but I did want to, um, you know, highlight that I, I would be curious to know how a support system would look like um, and who would be um, our target because, as uh, Ms. Govan said, um, you know, it's just not women, uh, even though. Um, we need to address this from a woman's lens right now, but it's also men. So I, I, I'd like to see that carried out and um, who, who our target is and, and what's the message that we want to share. Well, I, I believe you said last night you wanted to do something with the school committee, right? Yeah. And, and I, I just I, want everyone to get their comments. Is it okay? Yeah. No. Yeah, I would, yeah, I think if, Councilor Walsh, if it's okay, I'd like to hear what the vision is. <laughs> Okay, what I, what I did bring forth was to target the 10 to 12 year olds in the school, uh, mm -hmm. getting the school involved, school nurses involved. Um, that way they can be aware of the subject and can help stop the cycle on that way. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a nurse for, for 17 years and I'm willing to help mm -hmm. doing these conferences. Well, I heard you say school committee and I thought, nah, let's switch it to the uh, Springfield Women's Commission. <laughs> We'll take ownership of it and we can, because uh, we do have on our committee, uh, Latanya Naylor, who's on the school committee uh, and things like that. But um, in our past meetings, <laughs> we've been talking about uh, doing a survey, correct? And Mariah, did you get any um, feedback from the survey you sent out? I did. There, the commissioners added a good amount of questions um, 
the topics for us to like create this uh, this uh, survey that we want to send out to the city. Um, we still have to kind of figure out like the way that we're going to do that, like whether we want to create social media specific to the Springfield Women's Commission or like um, share it with like friends, families, people that we know in the city um, to kind of get out as well. But a lot of the questions that we got were like, um, what kind of groups and organizations are you involved in the city? What topics do you feel that would benefit from hearing about in the city? Where do you live? How do you feel living there? Um, what you like and do you like about your neighborhood? Um, opportunities you wish were available for you? Um, anything that might be causing insecurities for you as a resident of Springfield? Um, just areas of help and support, ways that, um, to feel safer and kind of all stuff like that. Um, so I feel like we got a really good um, like stepping off point, but we need to figure out kind of how to reach right. the audience that we are trying to reach to like answer those questions. What do you think, uh, Ayana? I see your hand up. I'm sorry, I was up from before. Let me take okay. it down. All right. Well, let me ask you, Ellen, you have a lot of good ideas and been involved with a lot of different groups because I, we're at the point now where we're, we've gotten to know each other. We have a sense of, we want to be impactful and we want the Springfield Women's Commission to be, when people think of these issues, we are who you go to and, and accomplish some things, you know, so people look to us in these situations. I, I kind of had a sense that we wanted to do we had talked about a listening tour and, and the survey. It's just a matter of how do we put it together? And it's getting to be summer. So I'm not sure um, if, if we'll meet again. I don't anticipate meeting in July, but what I do anticipate and hope for is that members of this commission uh, will branch off into, into committees. For example, if anybody's gonna be on the call to action committee, they could work through the summer because we want to do something in in the public in October, which is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And what you just set, posted something, Ellen. It's it's an additional um, day in, Nova it, in November as well, International Day for the Elimination of Violence. Yeah, so we we yeah. want to have a very in the um, fall. I think is a great fall, very public forum. But we want to be ready to go for it. Ellen may be a little busy though, right, Ellen? I think so. Maybe I'm considering. Uh, tossing my hat in for Ward 5, so we'll see. But Catery, oh. we'll talk. Yes. Uh, Catery, to your point, I think this is sort of twofold. So the survey and dissemination, you know, marketing communications is everything. So reaching the audiences we need, I think that goes hand in hand of, with a partnership um, with the local civic association. So quasi listening tour while always sharing this link essentially for the next 90 days or however long it takes. I don't think it'll be difficult to create the survey it will be difficult to get the word out, right? Set a deadline and have people actually take it. So if we're gonna go out to these councils, um, sharing it with as many groups as possible, schools, civic associations, you name it. So getting the information is one half of the battle. And then I think acting as a resource or sharing the resources that we know about collectively, like the representation in this room alone, right? Like to bring it back to Bernice, if, if someone needs resources or emergency help right now, who are we able to connect them to? What sort of resources can we corral or, or point them to, you know, various state offices and things like that. I think even just navigating or knowing can be so difficult when you're you're in that kind of scenario. So I see our role as, as really twofold, getting the word out and trying to get as much information as we can on what to work about, work on. But in the meantime, we of course know these issues are here and are already happening and connecting resources to the folks that need it most is, is more than half the battle. Okay. And, and what do you think, Lamari? I definitely think that, uh, oops, sorry, my camera just like readjusted real uh, there. Um, but before I, I want to preface this with, Bernice, thank you so much for being so great for bringing forth your story to, to so many minds in the room. But I want to assure you that you are in a safe space. And this call to action would be um, a, a great kickoff for for the women's commission, um, but like like was said before, it's sort of addressing and sort of the logistic component of it of of how we want to necessarily like broadcast that and get or a corral, I should say, um, 
our target group in the most effective way so that we have plenty of time, I think, um, to sort of uh, figure out the logistic component of that. So this is the perfect time. Okay. Anne, what do you think? Okay, if I keep repeating stuff, I had a little surgery on the left ear today. So you see my head um, tilted and I can't hear you that well. But anyway, <laughs> Sorry. I, think, <laughs> I, I think it's a great idea and I'm on board for whatever. And sorry to hear your story. Um, what had happened in the past, but it has happened to so many women and it's still happening to so many of us out there. But I'm on board, but whatever. Okay, and uh, Denise? Yes. You've got any more thoughts? Um, again, I just applaud Bernice. Yeah. Um, I, I just love the call to action and- Me too. It's um, I, I, I also, think that bringing it to a younger audience is so important because this is right before they start to develop, to develop those friendships. And it's the same ways we have good touch, bad touch, touch with small children. <clears throat> Sometimes we forget that when the children become intermediates and start to grow a little and their bodies start to grow a little, that we need to have these conversations with them about what doesn't work anymore. Um, you know, my grandson came home today and he he was playing around in school and knocked a, a candy out of a child's hand. Well, it's all fun, but he's, he's almost as tall as I am. So it's time for that conversation. What is and what isn't appropriate when it comes to people and tussling and all this stuff here. And so it, it I, I really like that idea that, that we're coming to young younger people. Um, I also would love to see us talk to some high school young ladies, junior high and high school young ladies, because that, that is where it's starting. You know, my office faces the cafeteria and I see a lot of horseplay with even boys and girls. And, for, you know, horseplay starts one way yep. and turns out another. So... Yep. You know, and it's not just about the girls and boys. It's about the girls whacking the boys too. So, mm -hmm. I really, I really like the idea that we're taking it to the youth, okay. and I really, I really love the call to action. We've been looking for something, and right. the call to action is a great one. Thank you, Commissioner Walsh. Oh well, well, thank you. I mean, this is the best committee I've ever been on. I mean, there's so much talent. Uh, on this and, and 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 so many different like uh, Lamari with Adam Gomez, uh, Ayana with Rep Ramos. I mean, there's and Denise in the schools and Mariah at AIC, and we don't know where Ellen's going, but she's here with us. And 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 Zaida, if you could ex could uh, tell them. I think the Women's Commission should do something similar to what you are doing with your mental health committee. Uh, you are having, in June, you are having a special day put together with your mental health committee. I, I am a member of it, but if you could outline yeah, that, sure. that's also something we might want to think yeah, about. Yeah, so what, yeah, what we're doing is we're having a mental health checkup, a launch. So we're launching, um, you know, an event where it's kind of like a kickoff to having regular mental health checkups. And that's something that I think everybody should be doing on a regular basis. Just like you get an annual physical, you should mm -hmm. get an annual mental health checkup. And I really love the idea of having uh, domestic violence awareness brought to the young kids. And like um, Denise said, to the even the older kids, because a lot of times what we do is we talk to the, the girls and tell the girls, you know, don't let them do this and don't let them do that, you know, and we should be talking to the boys and telling them don't do that, <laughs> don't do this, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm really glad that you're focusing on not just the girls, but the boys and the girls um, and giving them the message that, you know, what's right and what's not right, right? Because a lot of times we do see that in our homes and we see it in our neighborhoods 
So we see them, like Denise said, horsing around. So they think that's what they're supposed to do. But then, you know, when it gets goes too far, they don't know what to do with that. You know, so if we, you know, try to educate them and prevent that from happening, having it go too far, I'm being on prevention. That's what the mental health checkup day is all about. Um, and this is about prevention as well. And I really love that. So any, any way that I can help, please. And yeah, we're joined by Karina. Thanks for joining us, Karina. Where are you? Are you in a car? She is. Yeah, you're yeah. muted. Karina, you're muted. She's saying she's on her way home from work. <laughs> okay, you're muted. Unmute yourself. Can't she's hear driving. you. Okay. Here looking for it. Hi, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah, it was my extended day. I'm just getting off of work and I'm going home. So I'm driving. Uh, oh, well, be careful. We don't want to be responsible. Oh, I know. Hands and free. Then, hands free. <laughs> okay. But the, the thing to get back to uh, the mental health checkup day, it's actually going to be, I believe, in Court Square. And yes. people are going to see this committee out in the community. And, you know, this is my goal for the Women's Commission. They're going to see us out in the community. So what I'm is the day? It's uh, going to be um, uh, June 29th going yeah. to be from 11 to 3. We're having um, a lot of uh, mental health agencies are going to be out there. Um, hopefully some of the city um, officials and the water department will be giving out water, maybe some food trucks. Uh, we're in the planning stages of it. It's just going to be something that, you know, people will have information. We're in the process of developing some sort of a like uh, a card. The United Way has this really cool booklet, keychain kind of thing with all the important numbers on there. Um, so maybe having some resources like that. I'd love to see everybody out there. I'd love to see you, Ellen, um, Denise, anybody that wants to come out that day. Maybe you could get yourself a mental health checkup. <laughs> we will be doing some on that day, but what we'll be doing on that day is we're going to be announcing what day in July Every agency in the city is going to be doing free mental health checkups. So you can walk into any agency on that specific day. We haven't chosen a date yet for July. Um, you get a mental health checkup. 10, 15 minutes, sit down with the clinician that will, you know, talk to you and listen to you. That's what we do more of. Um, and, you know, figure out, you can figure out whether you want to continue and maybe see a therapist and talk to somebody or if you're good. So that's what we're doing. And we need to replicate that for domestic violence. Now, I mean, if we wanted to do something like that and call in people, is that something we could do at Putnam? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You could probably do it anywhere. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm directing that to Denise because that's where she is. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, well, that, but I mean, obviously we want to do the, the same kind of the thing. The schools but, is, is a little bit more different and complicated, I think, yeah. with all the, um, you know, the guidelines that they have to follow, but I, okay. I'm sure it can be done. All right. All right. We, we would just have to find- a Denise, location. you're muted. Yeah, for our call to action. Here's what I will say, is that our PTO president, um, Ms. Radia Hall, she has been adamant about getting some mental health for our young people. Awesome. And so in, the vehicle of the PTSO, we could definitely do something. And that is the way to get it into our schools without having to go through all of the channels. Because if you're bringing professionals in, mm -hmm. we're not doing anything that's, you know, that's just us, just, you know, right. speaking from what we know or whatever the case is. And so we could definitely do that. Um, our last meeting will be in June, obviously right now, but we can definitely plan on making sure that we have an evening and maybe a panel and the other PTSOs in the junior highs or the, the high schools could do so, at least to target because that's that's a, an older group. But um, what I wanna say too was, was I was speaking was that the males in, in our school in all the schools Again, they need the same help as the females. And, and without a doubt, to bring them into the conversation because this is such a, such a, a big, big 
thing for our children. And because they've come back from COVID and I've been able to, to see them first, mm -hmm. firsthand, they don't know how to interact with one another anymore. It's very, very, very difficult. The fights that we have within not only our school, but all the schools, they just don't have the, they've been away from each other for so long. The interactions oh. are, are very challenging and very difficult. So we definitely need to, to reach out to our young people. It's going to help for sure. Boy, what, what are the uh, aftermath of, of COVID? Uh, I've got some hands up. I'm going to go right across. <laughs> Ellen, your hands up. I more just wanted to make sure, you know, I, the, the conversation sort of went there that we were, you know, roping in schools or local affiliations, boys and girls clubs, Girl Scouts, you know, whatever form this event takes, you know, is it an actual event or, or a call to action, a pledge? Maybe we like, you know, what is the pledge then that we share with the students or what information are we imparting? Um, maybe it's a pledge for city officials to focus xyz resources on the you know uh, almost like a public opportunity for them but also while at the same time imparting real information to the students at the event um, whatever form that takes i feel like we can be creative well i i know i want the the form to be something that that the, the public can see or participate in and i think that who ends up on the um, domestic violence committee will, will make, will make recommendations to me uh, oh, how, how, how to do it. Uh, Mariah. Um, I have something I think we might be able to work with in that, like bringing awareness and that conversation about like domestic and relationship violence to schools. Um, so as most of you know, my sister passed away um, at the age of 17 from domestic violence and relationship violence related incidents. Um, and I've been working, my family has been working with um, the district attorney's office, um, Anthony Galuni and the whole um, like domestic survivor support system over there to actually create a documentary and like an awareness um, like video that they're planning on showing to schools um, in the area. So that is in the final stages of being completed. Um, they had like a whole camera crew come and do like a story with my family. They went through the whole situation. They're like planning on um, talking about warning signs and stuff like that. Um, and just like for parents and students to be able to identify those situations. And they're trying to roll that out this fall. Um, and I, I'm not sure what their plan is for like which schools they're planning to hit or which districts. Um, but it's it's all through um, through Anthony Galuni, so I feel like that could be something that we can relate to this, and the commission can possibly attend those um, those viewings and um, like start a conversation with it. Well, that certainly could start a uh, if we have a forum. That certainly could start the forum. So, um, um, I, I'm how was that for you? Mariah, to have to do that in your family, that's really, you have to relive it. It's, it's so brave. Yeah, it was, it was definitely an interesting experience. It's been, um, so we've been working on it for the last two years. So it, we've had time to kind of settle in to like, um, like reliving the experience and everything, but it was um, kind of, a really emotional thing because they like the um, courthouse, um, the district attorney's office came to our house um, and they wanted to like kind of go into my sister's life. Um, and they wanted to interview me um, specifically because I had the largest role in what happened. Um, like I was the one who kind of discovered the situation and everything. So reliving all of that was really kind of hard, but I wanted to do it because we're showing it to schools. Mm -hmm. And that is really important, more so than how I kind of feel about talking about it. Um, and you, your sister was a senior in high school, correct? Was right. it essential? Sabbath. Was she? The Sabbath. Yeah. Yeah. So certainly the, the, it's very relatable. Well, that's great of you to do it. That's for sure. So. But I, I totally feel like that's a way we can get that conversation I, 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 started in schools. I, I think it would do if we show that that would certainly generate a uh, 
a conversation, but we'll have to, you know, see how that, that goes. Now, let's see who has it. Uh, Ayana, is your hand up? Or is it just permanently up? Yes, it's up. I, I did. Okay. Yeah. I took it down and I put it back up. Yeah. Um, so what I wanted to just say quickly is that these are great um, sort of conversation and great ideas. And, you know, I just really like the synergy and sort of the, the wholeness and the, and the wellness and the wonderful pieces. And so I see a lot of different moving parts, Me you know, too. health and domestic violence, a lot of moving parts. And so I want us to kind of think about, you know, strategically that we have not necessarily um, you know, really sort of um, introduced or reintroduced ourselves to the community. And I think we need to certainly think about that piece first and certainly put together a plan of action in terms of who are we, what's our mission, what's our vision, so that we can then address those particular areas, not to say that we can do an event in this magnitude, um, Bernice, um, but I want us to make sure that we're clear as we're sort of thinking about what is it gonna look like publicly? Because we've gotta know how to be able to respond if folks say, well, who are the, what's the Women's Commission? What do you do? What's your vision? What's your mission? And, and how are you partnering with organizations? And so I wanna be very transparent and very clear because that's some of the work that I do when I'm working with different committees and different organizations is that I need to be very clear on what the goals are, what the mission, what the vision is, so then that way we can really sort of um, do a better job of presenting ourselves because a lot of people are just now hearing about the Women's Commission. And right. so I, I want to be able to do, you know, who we are first and then set that committee up of domestic violence where they can work on the details of it. But we need to, as a body, really clarify who we are. Thank you. Okay. And how do you suggest we introduce ourselves to the community. I mean, I, obviously you can do it through um, press conferences, press releases, or the announcement of what whatever it is we're going to do. But um, I, I want this committee to make an impact. That's why I was very careful in who I asked to join it, because I knew I had a great group of women who are very, who, who are and continue to be affected, you know. Um, Lamari, you have your hand up, but you're also muted. Yes, I just wanted to uh, to also sort of underscore the importance of a call to action as a call to action, not just a call for, you know, here's some awareness, here's, you know, just like a dialogue or rhetoric, but like what physically, ca tangibly can be done for victims uh, and, and, and future victims of domestic violence, especially, you know, the young kids, as I was saying before, um, stressing the importance of like who's safe versus a not safe person. And, you know, as the Women's Commission, we also need to extend that. I'd be remiss if I, if I didn't mention it during Pride Month, but that goes for our young trans women as well, because they are also a huge target for domestic violence within the family um, as they're transitioning or, you know, too scared to come out or anything like that. But um, but yeah. in, in focusing on the logistics, it's what is that action going to be specifically? Like, yeah, there's a pledge. Yeah, there's um, any anything sort of that. But, you know, representing, um, well, I mean, representing myself, but, you know, from Senator Gomez's office, who is the chair on the Senate side of the, uh, children, families, and persons of, with disability, um, it's, it's of significant importance that there is uh, in the logistic component, a tangible um, impact that we as the Women's Commission can do. Right, and I think that's probably why you all joined the commission. Uh, Zumali. Uh, yeah, I just want to um, uplift what Ayana said and Lamari both. And I think that if we continue having these conversations about who we are and what we're capable of doing, then when we have these calls to action, then we have a clear understanding of our roles. Um, yeah. Because again, um, understanding that we all have like an abundance and, and knowledge and autonomy, um, but us as a group need to be more clear of like what our mission is and what we're 
not just capable of, but what is our, like, not necessarily our end goal, but where are we leading to this? Um, I like, you know, I'd like to continue some dialogue around that um, while we, while we push forward in some of these, what I call campaigns, right? But these call to actions, because again, for me, it's one thing to um, get the information, but it's another thing to get the information and, and really do some kind of um, structural changes. And the other thing I wanted to highlight too was maybe um, in the survey, we could uh, format some kind of question around this TV um, just to get better perspective. Um, and understanding, um, because what I fear is maybe there is someone who's suffering right now and not safe, and there's nothing that we can do. Okay, and uh, Vernice, I think uh, in the matter of time, it might be better if you uh, if you did email to everybody uh, the speech. You know, so what I'm thinking is that you know we've all kind of gotten a sense of each other, and I, what I'd like to do is put together committees. I mean, I think I'd like to assign you, you fellow commissioners to different committees to get to get things done so we can move forward and give it give you some tasks so that in October, we'll be ready to have this public call to action and and have resources and, and everything like that. So if that's all right with with you. Uh, I will work on that because there are other things I would like us to do. Um, uh, I think, Bernice, if you could quickly sum up some of the points, and then I, I have another issue I wanted to discuss with the commissioners. So if you could do that. Do you want to do that, Bernice? Did you mm -hmm. want to just, you know, a couple of minutes, just kind of share something else and then I, I have to move on to a different agenda. We wanted you to sum up your speech if you could. Oh, sure. Um, Thank you, Zaida. I was gonna email a copy just so we wouldn't be rushed, but- um, Should still do that. Okay, um, it I'll go from the top and I'll skip over the part that I've already read from for you. Yeah. But, Good evening, my name is Bernice Smith Brown. I'm a registered nurse of 17 years and I have concerns regarding our community. Today, I wanna to focus on domestic violence. Domestic violence affects all ages, crosses all socioeconomic groups, ethnicities, races, genders, and sexualities. According to Mass.gov, exposure to domestic violence has profound effects on children. Research indicates that as many 10 million children per year may witness or be victims of violence in their homes. There is a correlation between domestic violence and child abuse, which may result in a child being physically injured as a direct result of domestic violence. Even if there is no physical harm inflicted upon a child, being a witness to domestic violence in a home often causes adverse effects. Domestic violence includes using children to criticize parenting skills, threatening to take the children away, using children to relay messages, and using visitation to harass the other parents. Many children who witness the violence in the home suffer from anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder. Young children may exhibit eating and sleeping difficulties and concentration problems. They may become withdrawn, dependent, and delayed in achieving the expected milestones. Older children could exhibit these same symptoms and also run the risk of becoming violent themselves, suffering from academic failure, substance abuse, and problems in their own relationships. In addition, these children are more likely to commit antisocial behavior at a young age and have significantly higher risk of becoming involved in the juvenile justice system than those who have not been exposed to violence in the home. Yeah, well, th uh, you know, I think we, to we all totally agree with you. And we're going to work on I, I, I love the call to action. And uh, as we get further along and what we're going to do, we, we will add you as part of an ad hoc committee. I think I, I, I don't see any reason why the Women's Commission can't also yeah, reach awesome. people and create ad hoc committees to help us um, achieve our goals. So, uh, but now I want to switch to something else. I think I sent to you from our, uh, we have a consultant helping us out on the Women's Commission. Women's Commission. If you didn't get it, because uh, they sent it from the council office about um, 
four, four, after four, uh, the Springfield Women's Commission Correspondence Recognition Committee. D did any of you get that or have a chance to look at it? Yeah. And, I, didn't, and, I didn't get it. Okay, so you didn't get it? If not, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I asked the council office to send it, but I'll send it to you. Okay. okay. And this is the Women's Commission reaching out to women in our community that have distinguished themselves uh, and, and receiving a formal recognition from the Springfield Women's Commission. Okay, and there were some um, either through um, resolves or on, on, the, on the council floor, uh, as either you and I could do that, or, or just simply a letter of recognition and thanks for what they've done. And in the uh, correspondence I sent you uh, I, there, I suggested that we reach out to members of the Springfield, uh, the Special Olympics. There are uh, participants in the Special Olympics from, from Springfield, and I believe one of them is from Indian Orchard, uh, Zyda. Yes. Uh, yeah. Anne Defarge, yep. yep. And then the, the women who are organizing the Juneteenth Jubilee. Okay, I mean, there's just a lot of people, a lot of women in our committee, in our community that are doing things that should be recognized. And I also think that they should be recognized with, with a letter or some correspondence from the, uh, from the Women's Commission. And that's another committee, the Correspondence Recognition Committee. And that's, Denise, where you come in. And I don't know if it's too late in the year, but I, I'm hoping that we will have our own letterhead. Mm -hmm with the uh, city seal, the Springfield Women's Commission, the names of all the commissioners. So we can send these letters on behalf of the Springfield Women's Commissioners. We want to, we want to recognize you for your efforts and, and so forth and so on. So, I mean, that's not as um, dramatic as the um, uh, call to action, but I think it's a very positive thing for, for <clears throat> to, to be doing. And then it creates an awareness that there's a commission out there recognizing women. So what yes. do you guys think about that? I think that's a good idea. Yeah. But we, we do need the right letterhead. And is it too late for Putnam to do something like that for us? Uh, we're out of school next week. And he's, oh. he's um, right now he's printing the diplomas for all of the high schools. Oh, wow. It's a 24-7. Oh. Yeah. So, um. I don't know that that we'll get into his schedule. Okay. But he but is it, he is going to be there all summer. That's what he tells uh, me. Uh, would he be able to do this in the summer? I'm sure he can fit it in someplace. He is, you know, he's there. He's going to be in the building. Are you going to be there? No, ma'am. Okay. At the end of the end of school, they they cut off my salary and send me home. <laughs> Uh, you can send me his information and I can call him. Of course, of course. We'll, we'll do that. And matter of fact, tomorrow and Thursday are the last two days for the cafe. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know that, that we had talked about meeting, meeting at Putnam. Yeah. Um, we've got to do that during the year. That's for sure. Because for uh, sure. We, can, we can go in and have a meal there. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we did that before, and, and yeah. it was, was effective. Okay, all right, we'll put that put that on our list of uh, of things to do. So, uh, yeah, I want to definitely create um, letterhead, and and then another um, suggestion from uh, was to sign up to have West have commissioners sign up for the Western Mass Economic Development Council emails. Then you get it. We get a sense of what's going on and who's done things in the uh, committee. So uh, if you did, haven't received this correspondence, let me know and I'll resend it. But I like the idea of recognition and, and Zyda. We should we should definitely think about doing resolve in honor of the uh, Special Olympics, is, particularly since there's somebody from Indian Orchard. You know, I think there's a couple. Well, of people yeah, we Springfield that have participated in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We actually wanted to do one from the um, Indian Orchard Citizens Council, so maybe we could do it together. Right. 
that would be great. Yeah, I, I definitely want to do something on behalf of the of the women's commission. So we'll have to figure out how that how we do that so that it's the women's commission and not the city council that gets the recognition for the rich women. So yeah. Always I'm always so energized by these meetings. There's so much so much talent and goodwill here. So Vernice, you really added a lot to our meeting. I'm so happy you came to the, what, what inspired you to go to the public speak? It's just it's something that uh, just been on my heart for a long time and I find it great. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's great because you know, with Zoom, we haven't had that many people. Thank you. Speak. So yeah, it was terrific having you there last night. So are there any other, any other issues to bring up? Do we want to meet? Do we want to take a chance on meeting in July? Hmm. If it's on Zoom, is anybody going on vacation at the end of July, at the end of June? I mean, yeah. What is it? The this beginning June, of July, right? This is June 7th. So it wouldn't be on June. June 5th? I mean, July 5th? You're talking, oh, that's the day after the Independence Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it might be nice to have a check in. It's it's Zoom. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. Keep the continuity going. Mm -hmm. And there are so many activities throughout the summer that we can go to. And mm -hmm. one thing yes. perhaps that's, that's one that's thing perhaps thing. we could do, Catery, is yeah. that at um what is it, awards company? They yeah. make the, they make the little tags. We could, you know, if the city can't afford it, we could probably just all go in and get some little tags that say that we are commissioners so that when we go to these events that we Put are you know we're responding as women commissioners and i like that if we're going to juneteenth or domestic violence or even the you know i, I wanted to announce the upcoming baby shower community baby shower that you know that we're 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 being seen in the community yeah yeah uh, so, i'm sorry uh counselor yeah. denise what is the baby shower well it's a baby shower that's going to take place on june the 25th at 12 noon at federal court so that's the stcc technology park mm -hmm. and it's going to be sponsored by extreme science kid mm. and we Resources will be there for WIC, nutrition, child safety, medical, and more. Um, and it's free to expectant mothers or families with children six months or younger. Mm. Registration is a must, and each registered guest, guest will receive a gift. And for more information, you can call 883-7686. And... I, I would really love to tell Stephanie, who is um, putting this together, about Bernice, who is also a nurse. She's a registered nurse. And to see if we can, and, and Zyda, to see if we can get a component in there uh, for some mental health. Absolutely. And, of course, the domestic violence piece. Even mm -hmm. to just have a small table of information there. Yeah, would, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, Every, and that would be a future goal at, at these events to have a brochure about the Women's Commission and who we are, uh, pictures of everybody on the commission and, you know, organizations they're, in, they're involved in. That's that's another piece of, of our identity. Sure, and that, that I could start to work on, and we could do that. We probably can't do it this summer at Putnam, but um, we might even be able to just print out some along the way, but a yeah. brochure is, is a nice, even if it's not a brochure, but one of those um, tent, not tent cards, but card, you know, a, a yeah. five by seven card. It says who we are and what mm -hmm. we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if, and if we can't fit pictures, we can certainly pick, put everybody's name and, and our tent cards I want to do over because they don't have the city seal okay. on it. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So that we would be recognized wherever we go. So you're feeling that. July fifth might work for me, and and will we will do it on July fifth on Zoom? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Zoom so, yeah. for the summertime would be convenient. Yeah, 
Yeah. I I won't I I won't I'll be in DR. My family doesn't even know I'm gonna like hide and get away real quick. Um yeah. so I'll be on the plane coming back home. Um but if there's any notes or anyone wants to follow up with me, I'll be here for it on the sixth. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well and I, I go on vacation the ninth, so that, that works for me. Yeah, and yeah, last, I think it'd be great to check in one more time in advance of any fall yeah. event or summer things. And, and depending on COVID and everything, did we want to stick to Zoom? Yeah. 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 OK. Because wherever we are, even if we're on a beach somewhere, we, we can still sign in. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you, Zoom Ali, at the uh, airport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I ran into, believe it or not, I ran into <laughs> Zyda at the airport in Denver. I, in, I was coming back from my grandson's, got long story, coming back from my grandson's uh, first communion in Nebraska. And uh, on, on the way home, Lincoln's a very small airport, even though it's the capital. People actually drive up to the door, if you can imagine, and just oh. walk. Here, here it is. But anyhow, they have only one carrier that goes through the whole city. Oh. And as, as we were getting on the plane, we were walking down the walkway and the uh, attendant comes running down the ramp and says, you all have to turn around and go back into the terminal because the cargo door won't close. Oh, Can you imagine? Oh, so we, yeah. got, we got rerouted through Denver, it was such a hassle uh, and anything else. But anyhow, long story short, ended up in the airport, same flight as Zyda. I'm sitting there with my daughter, Laura, and she says to me, doesn't that look like Zyda? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, it is Zyda. And Zumali, you were there too, but you were on a, you were on a different flight. Mm -hmm. so I was, I was, yeah. We're talking about a small world, huh? Well. Yeah. That was no, fun. It was there a few days later, I think. Yeah, that, that's what I she think said. I think Ayana has her hand raised. Okay. Yes, I do. Okay. I do. I wanted to let everyone know that a school committee woman, Latonia Naylor, uh, sends her regrets. She had to take her son to urgent care. Oh, oh no. So it, she just wanted what, to. Do you know why? I don't. It sounds like, yeah, she didn't tell me anything particular, but she did have to yeah. take him to urgent care. That's why she's not on tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, you know, Latanya is such a resource and, and, and her family, I think it's her uncle is the um, pastor of Holy Redeemer church in the uh, uh, North End of Springfield. Her mm -hmm. father-in-law, her father-in-law, her father-in-law. Okay. And mm -hmm. another place that we, we could meet and be, mm -hmm. be effective. Cause I know they, they do. I've been to uh, the Bishop Naylor day. Yeah, Bishop Naylor Day. They have uh, events. Yeah. 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 I also had the opportunity, which I couldn't believe, uh, um, speaking from the altar, which was yes. a... Oh, kind of a I saw those thing. pictures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. I, lo I love being able to go to the different churches and speak, but it was, it was very different because that wouldn't happen in the parish I belong to. So anyhow, yeah. all right. Another another great meeting. Um, I'm going to send out before July. The committees uh, still need a calendar committee. Still need to know. But that actually, uh, Mariah, is what I'm hoping an intern will do for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. Now, now, Mariah is going to help us at AIC for an intern. But that probably wouldn't happen to the fall either, right? Yeah, all the students are gone right now. So yeah. um, I'm waiting for a response from like the business arts and sciences professors. Um, but I'll I'll talk to yeah. some of the communication. Yeah. And we'll see yeah. what we can get come August. Yeah, and that would be helpful to take our minutes and you know send out emails and, and calendar of events and events. Yeah, that will be one other step that's gonna be very positive. Okay, don't want to keep anybody more than an hour. But I will be in touch and send out more correspondence. And if you didn't get the uh, recognition suggestions, let me know.
Bernice, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you, Bernice. Thank you, Bernice. Thank you so, much. Yes. so much for joining. So we appreciate it. Powerful. Powerful. We'll be in touch. I'll be in touch. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Take care.